Hi guys, today I am bringing you a very important video. If you are investing in altcoins, I highly recommend you stay tuned till the end. I am very confident that most of you guys will learn something new in this video. And if you do find value in what I'm saying, please do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button. None of this is financial advice. Let's get into it. I have a dream, that's all I need. I'll make it up with some work and belief. Now, regardless of whether you guys are interested in Hedera Hashgraph, Internet Computer, Quant, Algorand, Jasmine, Kadena, Caspa, it doesn't matter. This is still very important information. Now, the first thing I'm going to cover is Bitcoin dominance. Some of you guys may know what this is. Some of you guys may not. So essentially, Bitcoin dominance is Bitcoin's overall market cap compared to the rest of the crypto market. Now, when Bitcoin dominance is at a high percentage, altcoins are typically not pumping and 49% is pretty high. Now, just to show you guys what I'm talking about, if you look at a historical snapshot of December 27th of 2020, you will see that Bitcoin had a market cap of 488 billion and was trading at a price point of 26,000. And at this point in time, there was a lot going on in the economy. I won't say the word specifically because I don't want to get flagged. But if you look at the rest of the altcoins, even Ethereum only has a 77.8 billion market cap. Bitcoin is 6.2 times larger than Ethereum. XRP, 12.8 billion. Cardano, 4.8 billion. And then a project like Algorand, 377 million. And now if you look at the Bitcoin dominance chart, at this point in time, Bitcoin dominance was 73%, which means that it was pretty much the only cryptocurrency that was actually holding its own. And you can see shortly after that, Bitcoin dominance had a major drop and came all the way down to 39% dominance. Now, if you look at a historical snapshot of November 14th of 2021, this was the heights of the bull market. Bitcoin was trading at a price point of $65,400 and had a market cap of $1.2 billion, which the previous snapshot I showed was $488 billion. So Bitcoin almost did a 3x. However, if you look at Ethereum, it is now a market cap of $547 billion and is trading at a price point of $4,600. And Bitcoin at this point in time is only 2.2 times larger than Ethereum. The other snapshot, it was 6.2 times larger. Now, the point I'm getting at is oftentimes when Bitcoin has a high dominance, it is not altcoin season. So there are a lot of crypto investors out there getting mad that their altcoins aren't pumping, whether it's Hedera, Caspa, Jasmine, Quant, it doesn't matter. The point is that if you look at the Bitcoin dominance chart right now, Bitcoin dominance is at a very high point. And in the past, when it's been altcoin season, Bitcoin has been down in that 39 to 43% range. Now, if we actually do some technical analysis on the Bitcoin dominance chart, you will notice that Bitcoin dominance has low scope stochastics, but a very overbought RSI. Now there is a very bullish indicator for Bitcoin dominance, which actually feels very weird to say because that probably means altcoins are not ready to pump yet. But if you look at price action, it swings from a lower low to a higher low. If you look at the RSI, it swings from a higher low to a lower low. That is class A bullish divergence. Typically that means a local bottom is in. So personally, I would not be shocked to see if this trend line continues up and Bitcoin does end up bouncing up to that 52% dominance region. Maybe it pushes up to the 200 day moving average. And you do have to understand, even if Bitcoin dominance is pushing up, that does not mean that actual Bitcoin is going up as well, because dominance can still climb if Bitcoin and altcoins are dropping. It just means altcoins are dropping at a faster pace. Now, last but not least, Bitcoin dominance is also potentially trading in a rising wedge, which break down 68% of the time. So if it were to actually break down, that could be a good indicator for altcoins. However, if it was not altcoins that were pumping, the other option would be that it would be stable coins. Those are pretty much the only things that pump if Bitcoin dominance drops. And now I will also go over Bitcoin's weekly chart because you do have to keep in mind, even with what I just said about dominance, most altcoins are still tied to Bitcoin. If Bitcoin rises, most will rise. If Bitcoin falls, most will fall. It's just a matter of a 10% move for Bitcoin versus a 10% move for an altcoin. The Bitcoin move is significantly larger from a market cap standpoint. So on Bitcoin's weekly, the stochastics and RSI are both a little bit overbought, but they're starting to reset. Now, similar to the dominance chart, Bitcoin's price action swings from a lower low to a higher low. The RSI swings from a higher low to a lower low. That is class A bullish divergence. Again, typically that signals a bottom has been reached. So I wouldn't be shocked to see if Bitcoin came down, touched the 200 day moving average and bounced off of it as support. Now in doing so, Bitcoin has also potentially started to form a bull flag, which break up 68% of the time. And it has a measured move to just over 35K. And last but not least, the most bullish indicator on Bitcoin's 
weekly time frame. If you look at the 21 day, it just recently crossed the 200 day moving average. That is a golden cross. Typically that signals an explosive move is coming for Bitcoin. So overall, Bitcoin looks pretty good on the weekly time frame. Now, for those of you guys that want to trade short term, I will also go over Bitcoin's daily. So again, Bitcoin recently broke beneath the 21 day moving average. Typically that is very bearish. So unlike Bitcoin's weekly time frame, where the 21 day broke above the 200 day moving average and created a golden cross, on the daily, the 21 day broke beneath the 50 day moving average. That is a death cross. And if you look back in Bitcoin's history, traditionally, that is a very bearish indicator. However, the bullish indicators on Bitcoin's daily time frame are that the stochastics are starting to get oversold, and then the RSI is extremely oversold. And just like the weekly time frames, price action swings from a lower low to a higher low. The RSI swings from a higher low to a lower low. That is class A bullish divergence. And typically, that signals a bottom has been reached. So again, I would not be shocked if price action came down and bounce off the 200 day as support but anything can happen in crypto keep in mind that macroeconomics significantly outweigh technical analysis so if extremely bullish news comes out bitcoin and the rest of the crypto market could skyrocket if extremely bearish news comes out that could tank the whole crypto market and now i'm going to start going over some macro events so most of you guys probably know about the Bitcoin halving, but for those of you guys that don't, the Bitcoin halving is supposed to happen in 243 days. The ETA is April 17th of 2024. Now, essentially, the Bitcoin halving is where currently miners get 6.25 Bitcoin per block. And when the Bitcoin halving happens, they will only get 3.125 Bitcoin per block. And these halvings happen every four years. And the reason these are known to be very bullish events is because it makes the Bitcoin that are in circulation more valuable. If miners are no longer getting as much Bitcoin, then it's naturally going to make the Bitcoin that are in circulation a lot more scarce, which typically is always going to drive the value of Bitcoin up. Now, I'm going to be honest, personally, I'm of the belief that the halving will not have much relevance after this cycle or maybe the cycle after that. I would like to believe we will eventually get to a point where crypto is not quite as volatile. I don't think it will just run on four-year cycles. But at the current moment, this is something you guys definitely need to keep your eyes on. And traditionally, in the past, it's been the best time to start accumulating crypto before the halving. Now, the next thing I want you guys to understand is the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. So right now, you can see it's at the 50 region, which is neutral. So why measure fear and greed? The crypto market behavior is very emotional. People tend to get greedy when the market is rising, which results in FOMO. Also, people often sell their coins in irrational reaction of seeing red numbers. With our Fear and Greed Index, we try and save you from your own emotional overreactions. There are two simple assumptions. Extreme fear can be a sign that investors are too worried. That could be a good buying opportunity. And then when investors are too greedy, that that could mean the market is due for a correction. Now, do keep in mind, it is possible that sites like these could be used for manipulation tactics. However, from my personal experience, this indicator is usually pretty accurate. So for example, when the number's down in this 15 to 20 region, and all you're seeing out there is articles that say Bitcoin's dead, Bitcoin's going to zero, crypto's a scam, etc. The reality is that is when you should be buying crypto. On the contrary, when the number's up here in this 60, 70, 80 region, that's when you see Bitcoin's going to 200K. Bitcoin's the future, crypto's the future, blockchain is inevitable. And typically that is when the market is due for a correction. Now, again, this is not the end all indicator, but it is a tool you guys can have in your arsenal. Now, the next thing I want you guys to understand is the Fed raising interest rates. Now, the most recent raise was back in July. So this isn't exactly current news, but you guys still need to understand it because it's very important. So what this says right here, the Federal Reserve announced Wednesday it had raised its key interest rate by 0 0.025 to as much as 5.5, the highest level in 22 years as it continues to fight persistent inflation in the U.S. economy. So by raising interest rates, the Fed hopes to make borrowing and investing more expensive, thereby reducing overall demand for goods, services, and labor in the economy. So basically right now, if the average investor wants to go take out a loan to buy Bitcoin or to buy a house or whatever the case is, they are going to have to pay back more money due to the interest rates being raised, which is naturally going to disincentivize people to take out a loan to begin with. So I'm not going to say it's impossible for crypto to pump if the rates are being raised, but the reality is without some sort of catalyst to skyrocket crypto, I wouldn't hold my breath for crypto to start pumping until rates start getting dropped, just because there's no incentive for people to start taking out loans. Now, the major piece of news that you guys need to understand, which in my opinion is easily one of the most important macro events in crypto, and that is BlackRock filing for a spot Bitcoin ETF. So the first thing you guys need to understand is that BlackRock is the world's largest asset manager. They are in charge of almost $10 trillion of funds. And if they get a Bitcoin spot ETF accepted, that will make it significantly easier for the average person to get into cryptocurrency, especially the older generations who have most of the money. In turn, that could skyrocket Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto market. And what's even more important is that it is a spot ETF. So the difference between spot 
spot and future is that a spot ETF BlackRock actually has to hold Bitcoin, which naturally will give Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto market a lot more credibility. I mean, just think about it. The world's largest asset manager holding Bitcoin, that could be huge. Personally, I have went as far to say that I believe this could be a catalyst that could start an early bull market. That is how big I think this could be. So I highly recommend you guys keep your eyes on this BlackRock Bitcoin ETF and the rest of the indicators and macro events that I talked about in this video. But that's about all. Let me know down in the comments, where do you guys think the crypto market's headed? Please do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button if you found this content valuable. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of your day. I'm hitting the ground running up and coming. Ain't nothing. Yeah, rookie of the year. I'ma keep it 100. Cold blooded. No budget from nothing to something. I ain't bluffing. I got a full hand and a full plan. I ain't gonna stop till I'm at the top, man. Every single drop got me feeling awesome. I'm